let's work with number 9. Find the antiderivative of the function 3 over x minus 10. All right, so this is the same as us saying we want the integral of 3 over x minus 10 dx. It's assumed that we're going to use x for this because that's the variable our expression's in. All right. Well, let's use the u substitution. Try to get it to look like one of those. I bet we're going to be look like 1 over x, what we want it to be. So u is x minus 10, which makes du 1 dx. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to factor the 3, that constant, out of here and make it 1 over u du. All right. Well, from our equation right up there, that is 3 natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And because u here is x minus 10, that is 3 natural log of x minus 10 plus c. Now let's try number 10. We've got the antiderivative of 9 over 3x plus 5 dx. Same idea, we're going to use u equal to 3x plus 5, which makes du 3 dx. Now I'd really just like, I really need to replace just the dx, so I'm going to write this as 1 third du equals dx. All right, so when I integrate this, first I'm going to bring that 9 out. 1 over u du. Now, that's not quite going to work because I have that 1 third there. Let me bring that 1 third out. All right. So I need to multiply 9 that I factored out times the 1 third. That will be 3 natural log absolute value of u plus c, which will be 3 natural log of 3x plus 5 plus c. Alright, number 11 looks a lot more complicated. It really isn't that crazy. Um, because we want this to look like 1 over x, right? Well, if I make my u equal to... I'll go ahead and rewrite this. 2x cubed plus 3x over x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Okay. The wise idea here would be to make u equal to x to the fourth plus 3x squared. The reasoning there is that when I take the derivative of that, I might get something with a couple of lower exponents, which is what I happen to have in my numerator. So oftentimes, when you see something like this, making the denominator equal to u, if you take the derivative and it becomes something that looks like your numerator, that's a good idea. Okay, that helps. So this would be 4x cubed plus 6x dx. Now, that does not look like what I have in my numerator. However, it, is dif it differs by a factor of 2. So if I divide everything by 2 here, or in essence, make this 1 half du, that is 2x cubed plus 3x dx, which is what I want. So this will turn into the integral 1 over 2 du, and that would be 1 over u. So I have 1 half natural log of u, x to the fourth, plus 3x squared, plus c. That's really all there is to that. Even though it looks pretty crazy, that's all there is to it. All right. Find the antiderivative of the function log base 3 of x. So log base 3x dx. Now we had a formula, right? I guess that's what you would call it, a formula at the top of our paper there that's log base ax equals log base ax, the integral of that dx, 
equals x over natural log a times natural log of x minus 1 plus c. Now we can use that with this. The difference is our a, in this case, is just 3. All right, so a is 3 in that function. So this would be x over natural log 3 times natural log x minus 1 plus c. We did not have to use u substitution, so we can keep the, the x where it is. That's it. Right, last one on this. Integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine x over 1 plus cosine x dx, and this is the definite integral. So we should get a number answer here. All right, now what I said earlier still holds. If you look and you see something that you could take the derivative of to get something else, all right, that's usually a good idea. So the derivative of sine is cosine, but we really need don't need a 1 plus cosine there. But if these two have a relationship like this in a fraction, um, where the derivative is on top or the derivative is on bottom, and vice versa, goes in the denominator, numerator, then that's where the natural log comes in. So let's try u equal to 1 plus cosine x. Well, then du is negative sine x dx. Well, if you notice, we have a sine x dx right here. So we can make this negative du equals sine x dx. So we'll replace sine x dx with negative du. So negative, which I can factor out actually, negative du. The sine is taken up with that negative du, so we have 1 over u. Now, the limits of integration, though, these are going to change because we're going from x's to u's, beginning with pi over 2 and 0. All right. Cosine, 1 plus cosine of pi over 2 is 1. I'm going to do that again. I did that earlier. Cosine pi over 2 is 1. And 1 plus cosine of 0 is 2. So this changes to integrate variables of integration from negative. We have 0 to 2. I guess I didn't need to do that. So from 0 to 2, or from 2 to 1, 2 to 1. Right. Now, I'm going to change this to from 1 to 2 of 1 over u, du. So this would equal the natural log of the absolute value of u. I'm going to go ahead and replace this as 1 plus cosine x. Okay, And we're evaluating this from 1 to 2. Now, if I plug 2 in, oh, you know what? Don't do that. Don't do that. This would be the natural log of u evaluated from 1 to 2. I, I changed my limits, so I don't need to do that. So this would be the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 1, which is the natural log of 2. And since those are both positive, the absolute value bars do nothing for us.